Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about the different cavity preparation design of amalgam as compared with composite. The, the cavity design that is used for amalgam restoration and the cavity design that is used for composite re restoration. Firstly, we'll talk about basic facts about amalgam and composite and then we'll move on towards the design of the cavity when you are using amalgam as compared to the cavity design when you're using composite restoration. So let's get started. Now firstly we have a tooth structure. You can see in this diagram there is a tooth but when you consume excessive sugars and when your oral hygiene is not proper there is dental caries initiation in anywhere in the tooth. You can see in this diagram this part is where dental caries is present. Now when dental caries is present it means that some restoration is now required. By restoration we mean that this diseased part of the tooth has to be removed and when it is removed the area that is left behind some restorative material has to be placed so that the continuity of the tooth is restored. Now dental caries that is present in a tooth can be either limited to enamel, it can involve dentine as well or it can start in cementum. Any of this combination can be present. And when we start restoration we remove the diseased part of the tooth and then we place some kind of restorative material over here in which the gap has been created. The most commonly restorative materials that are used today are composite that is more aesthetic and second is amalgam which is, has a very long history of being very successful when used especially in the posterior teeth. Now talking about dental amalgam first, we will discuss some basic facts about dental amalgam. You can see in this diagram, this is a tooth, initially some dental caries was present over here and when the dental caries was removed, amalgam restoration was placed. You can see this silverish color, this is your dental amalgam. The entire caries lesion was removed and it was filled with amalgam. Amalgam is a metallic restorative material. It is a mixture of alloy and mercury. Basically, it's composed of two parts. We have the powder part and then we have the liquid part. And when we mix these two, a dental amalgam is produced and then it is condensed into the cavity as you can see in this picture. There are basically two types of dental amalgam that are present. The first is high copper and the second is low copper amalgam. Currently, high copper amalgam is most frequently used because of its superior properties along with some beneficial properties such as decreased microleakage and increased occlusal stress bearing capacity. Now you can see in this picture there is a difference in color between the dental amalgam as compared to the tooth. So this means that the dental amalgam is not aesthetic as compared to composite which is tooth colored material. So due to this uh, disadvantage dental amalgam is mostly limited to the posterior restoration such as premolars and molars because when you smile this restoration is not visible. So dental amalgam is limited, limited to your posterior teeth where aesthetics is not an issue because you can see there is a difference in color between the restoration as compared to the tooth structure. On the other hand when we talk about composite you can see in this picture this is your tooth present over here and this is the restoration that has been placed. You can see the color of the restoration as compared to the tooth is same. So composite is an aesthetic restorative material that can be placed anywhere in your mouth in the anterior teeth as well as posterior teeth. But as anteriorly composite is more beneficial because when you smile your anterior teeth are visible so nobody can discern whether there is a restoration present or there is a natural tooth. The color is same as the natural tooth that is present. Talking about some detailed facts about composite. Composite is a highly cross polymeric material. Different uh, components are present together and they form a, a phase where composite is produced. Composite is most mainly uh, composed of resin matrix. Then we have a filler part which basically enhances the properties of composite. Coupling agent bring, brings all these materials together. And then we have an activator and initiator. Basically activator and initiator are that part which leads to formation of composite. Composite are of two types mainly and that is based on their activation system. Either they are chemically activated or they are light activated. By light we have some uh, light source that is present and when their composite is exposed to the light source the composite's reaction starts and it starts to bond to the tooth. 
As we have discussed before, composite is mainly used where aesthetics are required, for example in your NTAT, but since today's composite has been having properties similar to amalgam, these composite material can also be used posteriorly because they are tooth colored, so aesthetics are their main advantage and their additional properties as well. Now talking about the cavity design that is used for amalgam, you can see this tooth structure and initially there was some carious lesion that was present over here and when this carious lesion has been removed, this cavity, you can see particularly designed cavity has been prepared which will receive the amalgam restoration. Firstly, the cavo surface angle should be 90 degrees. You can see this internal wall of the cavity and this external wall of the tooth. Where they two meet, the angle is formed and that angle is known as cavo surface angle. And in this case, the cavo surface angle has to be 90 degrees because when it is acute, for example, it is less than 90, there are increased chances that this edge where the restoration will be placed and where occlusal loads will be present, there are chances that this can break. So 90 degrees is the optimal uh, angle that should be present in the cavo surface angle. Secondly, you can see these internal angles that are present and these internal angles are rounded and this also should be kept in mind so that the cavity is more retentive and occlusal stress can be bared more optimally. And when there is compound cavity present, for example, it involves more than one surfaces, the gingival seed should be of 1.5 to 2 mm. You can see in this diagram also. Now, in the second diagram, you can see the cavity was present and now dental amalgam has been placed and one important thing that you have to note a difference between dental amalgam and composite the dental amalgam doesn't bond to the tooth structure it is retained in a cavity that is specially prepared so that it doesn't dislodge so there is some mechanical restoration as compared to composite there is chemical restoration composite bonds to the tooth so this is a main difference between dental amalgam and composites presence in the cavity and you can see in this isthmus area, a certain amount of bulk of dental amalgam should be present so that it is more retentive. You can see these walls of the cavity of this where amalgam will be placed. These should be parallel and perpendicular to the occlusal load so that they are more retentive and they are more resistant to occlusal forces. One more important thing is that bevels should not be placed when you are using amalgam restoration. Bevels are these angles that are created for better retention and this better retention is basically used in composite where you use adhesive to increase the surface area so that the restoration is better bonded to the tooth cavity. Furthermore, talking about the primary retentive form of this cavity, this means that how well retentive the restoration material will be in the cavity and when we talk about that, the cavity that is designed should be occlusally converging. You can see this is how straight and this is how it is converging. So it should be occlusally converging. That is the cavity design and that has the optimal characteristic which enhances retention form of amalgam restoration. Secondly, for additional retention, which is a secondary retention, you can use grooves, pins and slots. You can see in this diagram, these are pins that are, have been placed and this basically improve the retention when amalgam is present in the cavity. Moreover, talking about the resistance form that is the amalgam is present in the cavity and it's not dislodging, a box shape preparation should be made as you can see in this picture. Talking about the outline form that is how well you will design the cavity so that you include all of the adjacent structures, it should include pits, fissures and any additional suspicious area which you think might have dental carry. So all of these structures are removed. And finally, for pulp protection, if you think that the cavity is very close to the pulp, you can use calcium hydroxide. You can see that, for example, this was your pulp present very close to the base of the cavity. So you can place some calcium hydroxide so that pulp protection is offered. Now, secondly, talking about the cavity design that is used for composite, you can see in this picture, this is your tooth. And you can see how minimally extensive the cavity has been created. Only those areas where carious lesion is present, only that are removed. It is the characteristic feature that is used for composite restoration. Minimal extension, only carious lesion is removed, no additional area is involved. Which was the case for amalgam where additional lesions where you have suspicion that it might be involved, those are also removed. Now depth of the pulp and axial walls depend on the 
depth of KV solution that is present in the tooth. Now here enamel bevels are used as we will discuss in shortly how these enamel bevels help in retention and increase the surface area for the presence of composite. Now bud joint is also present at the tooth surface. You can see somewhere over here bud joint is present and that bud joint enhances the resistance form of the composite. When the walls of the composite cavity is created, these walls should be rough and we will discuss shortly why it is important to, so that these surface of surface where the cavity is present, these walls should be rough. Now talking about the outline form of the composite cavity, only the carious structure that has caries should be removed, no additional area should be removed. Secondly, as we have discussed before for amalgam, the chemo surface angle should be 90 degrees or more so that the tooth structure doesn't break when occlusal loads are present because if the angle is less than 90, there are chances that the tooth structure where an acute angle is present that will fracture. Talking about the primary retention form, as we have discussed in amalgam, the primary retention form was occlusally converging cavity. But since composite binds chemically to the uh, tooth structure, here there is no such uh, requirement that the cavity should be divergent or convergent. Here the cavity should be only include those carious area and when all the carious lesion has been removed, etching, priming and bonding. This is, the, this is the adhesive system that is applied to the tooth and then composite is placed so that chemical retention can occur with the tooth. Secondly, if more retention is required only when, when there is extensive restoration present. For example, complex cavity is present where more than three surfaces are involved. In that case, secondary retention form can be used. Now, enamel bevels were not indicated. They were contraindicated when you, we were using amalgam restoration. But when we talk about composite restoration, enamel bevels, wherever they can be placed, should be included. And there is a reason why these enamel bevels are present. You can see in this picture, this is a straight angle you can see but here there is a slanting angle that is present and this is created and this is called as enamel bevel and they are important because they increase the surface area so that greater adhesive system can be applied and greater retention of composite is present so that it doesn't dislodge and therefore helping in retention as well as resistance form and secondly the the prepared walls of the composite cavity should be rough and it is important they should be rough because when they are rough the surface area increases. You can see this is somewhat the prepared wall of composite cavity should look and when they are rough they increase the surface area and when they increase the surface area adhesive system can be applied to it and when it is applied composite retention is m better as compared to smooth surfaced walls which were used for amalgam restoration. In amalgam restoration the walls should be smooth but for composite restoration the walls should be rough. Now finally talking about the current situation, dental amalgam is still widely used but since there are some suspicions about their mercury, allergy, toxicity, so there is decline in amalgam restoration but there is no proven research that says that there is toxicity when dental amalgam is used but still it is used, it is considered safe since its color is different than the tooth structure, it is less aesthetic so it is mostly limited to the posterior restoration and at times dental amalgam is more durable and more stress bearing as compared to composite. On the other hand, since patients require more aesthetics as compared to 10, 20, 30 years before, now patients require aesthetics as their prime concern. So due to this, composite is widely increasing because it is more aesthetic. It can be used in posteriors or anteriors because it is tooth matching restoration and because of their improved properties it is comparable in terms of its properties to dental amalgam. So in this video we talked about some basic facts about dental amalgam and composite and then we moved on towards the different cavity designs that is used and its difference when dental amalgam is used as restoration and when composite is used. When dental amalgam is used the cavity design should be different so that dental amalgam is more retentive as compared to composite where cavity design is different so that its retention when used with composite should be better. So I hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.